This is Pam Smith with Farm Journal Magazine. I'm with Erin Hager at the University of Illinois Weed Science Day. And Erin, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about, there's a lot of fields out there that look pretty bad this year. Right. Why is that? A lot of it has to do, obviously, with the weather. And many of the fields that we see that have an abundant amount of weed growth either had a uh, reduced rate of the soil residual herbicide applied close to planting time, or in other cases had absolutely no residual. So unfortunately, uh, any time that we plan to do a, a total post program or have a post-emergence herbicide application is a very significant part of our overall program. Uh, unfortunately, years like this, we unfortunately again remember the fact that Mother Nature can trump all good intentions that we have. If we can get in the fields, if we can be timely with the applications, these types of systems can work very well. But unfortunately, if we're delayed for several days or, as in the case in many fields this year, uh, several weeks, the weeds are still growing, they're still competing with the crops, and unfortunately in many cases they're probably already causing a, a fairly dramatic impact on the crop yield. So is there anything that farmer can do at this point? Unfortunately, really, it, it, it's going to be much, much more limited from here on out. In soybean, of course, we have products. Uh, we'd always have to consult a label for the maximum growth stage and application timings, but uh, glyphosate has a fairly large application window, a good ability to adjust the rates according to weed size. Corn, on the other hand, is much more limited this time, given the stage of growth that it's at. Uh, many products are now off the label. And given the size of the weeds that are growing in the corn, coverage would be very, very difficult to achieve. And of course, larger weeds are just inherently much, much more difficult to control than smaller weeds. So looking ahead to 2011, um, what advice would you have for a grower? Should he be mapping what's out there and thinking about residuals for next year? Or is that is that his best plan? Well, certainly consider all types of, of options that you do have and, and try not to limit your weed weed control or weed management approach to just one particular type of either product or application. Uh, next year, who knows, 2011 could turn off to be a dry year. We may see farmers who try to use more residuals but maybe don't get enough water or precipitation to get them worked into the soil solution so they fail. Uh, but inherently, year in and year out across multiple locations, uh, environments that we can sample around not only Illinois but anywhere across the, the U.S. growing regions. Uh, the more integrated programs that we can do, the less likely we are to uh, encounter these situations where you know, we get into these challenges with the environment when we simply can't get one of the one program overall to work very well. But if we mix these things up, literally don't put all of our weed management eggs in one basket, if you would, the probability of success is much greater. So really what we're seeing, I mean, we've had a lot of talk about weed resistance, but this year it's not all weed resistance, is it? Not yet. Uh, we certainly expect that once a lot of the soybean fields are treated, uh, again, we're going to see a lot of glyphosate by itself on soybean this year. We expect to see more resistance issues pop up in the next few weeks after these fields are treated. But however, again, uh, larger weeds that aren't necessarily controlled with one application of glyphosate doesn't always necessarily mean that they're resistant. They could simply be beyond uh, you know, effective control based on what label rates that we can use. All right. Thanks a lot, Aaron.